Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about sciatica, what is it, what causes it, and what are some of the things that might mimic sciatica but not really be coming from nerve compression in the low back. So all the nerves coming through the buttock down the leg come from the lumbar spine or low back. Here's the model. There's your back, your buttock, your belly. And here you'll see in the lumbar spine, there's these yellow individual nerve roots that exit the spine. There are two main nerves that come down the leg. One is called the femoral nerve, one's called the sciatic nerve. The femoral nerve is composed of nerve roots coming from the upper lumbar spine that come together like an upside down tree to form a trunk. And this nerve goes all the way down the front of the leg through the thigh. The sciatic nerve is the other nerve and it's the largest nerve in the body. The sciatic nerve comes from the lower section of the lumbar spine and these nerve roots come out again to form a trunk, but that trunk goes through the buttock this time and it goes down the back of the leg to carry signals all the way down to the foot. Sciatica is a global term for numbness, pain, pins, needles, and tingling as a result of compression of any one of the nerves going through the sciatic nerve. So that would commonly be the L4, L5, or S1 nerves. Femoral nerve pain comes from compression of a nerve that's composed of any one of the nerves, often the L2, L3, or L4 nerves that are coming down the front of the leg. There's no real word for compression of the femoral nerve. I'll make one up here, let's call it femorica. And we should have that word because often patients come in with a pinched L2, L3, L4 nerve, and there isn't a matching term for sciatica for it, so let's just call it femorica. Now you'll see when doctors talk to each other, we'll rarely use the word sciatica because it's too generic, it's not specific enough. What we'll say is the word radiculopathy, and you may see that term. Radiculopathy simply means compression of any one of the singular nerve that's coming through either the sciatic or femoral nerve. So for example, an L5 radiculopathy means pinching of the L5 nerve, which is causing pain through the sciatic nerve, so technically it's sciatica, but an L5 radiculopathy would be a more specific way of saying it. Based on where the leg pain is and which muscles are weak, we can often figure out which nerve is being affected. So for example, for the femoral nerve or femorica, let's say it's a pinched L2 or L3 nerve, the L2 and L3 nerve supply sensation to the front of the thigh, sometimes to the inside of the thigh, and that nerve also supplies strength to the quadriceps muscle, which is a muscle that allows you to raise your leg so you might have difficulty going upstairs. An L4, L5 radiculopathy usually starts in the buttock, wraps around the hip, it can come sometimes go to the knee, and often to the top of the foot. The L4 and L5 nerve plug into a muscle that allow you to raise your ankle like this, so if you have a pinched L4 and L5 nerve, if you try to walk on your heels, you might have a foot drop. Lastly, S1 nerve, so S1 is part of the sciatic nerve. The S1 nerve goes to the buttock, down to the back of the leg, and go to the side of the foot. The S1 nerve plugs into the calf muscle, which means you might have difficulty coming up on the tippy toes. It's important to remember that even though the sciatic nerve and the femoral nerve come through the leg and go all the way down to the foot, sometimes pinching of those nerves can cause isolated pain, either only in the buttock, sometimes only in the back of the thigh, sometimes even only in the foot. So you'll have to work with your doctor to figure out whether or not you really have sciatica. So let's review some of the most common causes of sciatica or radiculopathy. These are all covered in different videos on my channel. Lumbar disc herniation is when there's a tear in the jelly donut layer. The donut layer tears, the jelly spits out and it hits a nerve and that can cause buttock and leg pain. Then there's lumbar stenosis, which is a bone spur either in the center of the canal or pinching the nerve as it's trying to exit the canal that can cause buttock and leg pain. There's also lumbar synovial facet cyst, which is a cyst that comes off of the joint and that cyst can pinch a nerve. And lastly, there's spondylolisthesis, which is translation or abnormal shifting of one bone on top of another. Sometimes that can come from arthritis, it can also come from a fracture, but it can pinch a nerve at that specific level. So if you have buttock and leg pain, you make an appointment with your spine doctor. Typically what we'll do is we'll do a physical exam and often MRI. An MRI looks at the soft tissues, the ligaments, the discs, and the nerves to see if you really do have nerve compression. If you do have compression that's seen on the MRI, then your sciatica or your femorica could be coming from a radiculopathy or a pinched nerve. But please be cautious in remembering that as people age, MRIs demonstrate bone spurs, disc herniations, stenosis, etc. It doesn't mean that the compression seen on the MRI is definitely causing your buttock and leg pain. So a doctor will work with you to help you determine whether or not it's truly a sciatica or radiculopathy. Often we'll use epidural steroid injections, which is putting a needle over the nerve, 
numb the nerve, put steroid on the nerve to see if it helps, because if it does help, then we'll know the issue is coming from the nerve. Conservative therapy is usually used to treat sciatica or a pinched nerve, but often if conservative therapy fails, as you'll see from my other videos, surgery can really have outstanding outcomes. So what if there's no compression seen on the MRI? Well, then the buttock and leg pain is probably not coming from a radiculopathy or a pinched nerve. It can be referred pain. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the pain is coming from somewhere else, but it's radiating or referring down the leg, but it's not really coming from nerve compression. So here are the four most common causes of referred pain that can often mimic sciatica, but it's not really coming from the pinched nerve. The first is lumbar facet joint syndrome. The lumbar facet is a little joint that's in the back of the spine that can often become arthritic or inflamed, and that can radiate pain, as you'll see here, through the buttock, down the back of the leg, sometimes down the front of the leg. In my experience, rarely does facet joint syndrome go below the knee. Facet joint pain is often worse with extension because when you extend your back, you're crunching down on that facet joint. It's often worse in the morning when people first wake up, and really it's common after a car accident because a car accident can stretch that capsule. Next is SI joint dysfunction. The sacroiliac joint or SI joint is the largest joint in the body. So this is your buttock. This is the sacrum, which is the base of the spine. The ilium is that large hip bone that comes up. The SI joint is this specific joint. Now that joint can become arthritic. There's a capsule around it can be torn. And often SI joint pain presents as pain specific to the SI joint. This pain is sometimes worse with sitting. But most importantly, this pain can radiate into the buttock all the way down the leg. I've even seen it go down to the foot. It's often a great mimicker of a pinched nerve, although it's not really a pinched nerve, it's the SI joint. Imaging studies are rarely good to look at the SI joint. The MRI is often not useful because you'll see the SI joint, but you don't see much inflammation around it. SI joint dysfunction is really something that has to be diagnosed by a physician doing a physical exam in the office. Next to the hip joint, the hip joint, as you can see here, is right near the sciatic notch where that sciatic nerve comes out. It's also right near the femoral nerve in the front. So things like hip arthritis, which is loss of cartilage, or soft tissue issues with the hip can definitely radiate into the groin, sometimes into the buttock, into the front of the thigh, it does go to the knee. In my experience, hip pain rarely goes below the knee, but can certainly mimic sciatica or femorica. You'd obviously get an x-ray or an MRI just to take a look at the hip. Lastly is a diagnosis of exclusion called piriformis syndrome. Diagnosis of exclusion in our world means basically we can't figure out what's going on. We're ruled out of radiculopathy. We've ruled out sciatica. We've ruled out any other cause of your buttock and leg pain. So we're just going to call it piriformis syndrome. The piriformis muscle is a muscle that goes from the pelvis that's attached to the hip joint here. And the sciatic nerve goes underneath the piriformis muscle as it goes down the leg. So there is some thought that sometimes that muscle can be pinching the nerve. The imaging study we would get is often an MRI of the pelvis, and it's called an MRI neurogram, which can actually look and map the nerve at the level of the piriformis muscle. And lastly, similar to piriformis syndrome is hamstring tendonitis, which is inflammation of the hamstring tendon as it inserts into the pelvis bone. This is often diagnosed with physical examination and MRI, and can also mimic sciatica. Sometimes if we're not sure if it's nerve pain, or if it's something like facet joint syndrome, or a side joint dysfunction that's referring pain, we can often put medication or steroid into the facet joint, into the SI joint, and again, if there's relief, then we know the problem is coming from that joint. And lastly, remember that the things are not mutually exclusive in the sense that you can have an L2 or L3 radiculopathy, femorica coming down the front of the leg, but you may also have a simultaneous hip issue, so you'll have to work with your doctor to sort out what is causing your leg pain. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about sciatica, femorica, and what causes it. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button.